All right, so how many times have you heard someone say something about the Council of Nicaea uh, in an attempt to discredit Jesus, the Bible, or Christianity, or any, or anything like that, right? It's like people always have all these claims. There's like a thousand and one memes that people whip out like they're ninja stars or something and think, you know, think that they're disproving Christianity. No one ever makes any, uh, they, no one ever shows any uh, proof. They just make claims. I had a guy make all these claims about the Council of Nicaea. And when I challenged him on it, you know, predictably, he just said, well, you prove your point. Okay, well, no, you made a claim. I'm asking you to prove your claim with some evidence. I told him, show me some documents from the Council of Nicaea. And of course, he couldn't do it. He could, he could refer me to anti-Christian websites that made claims, but he couldn't show me any evidence. I even found the documents and posted them for him to read over. I said, hey, you, since you can't find the documents, I'll post the documents myself. Now, take a look and see if there's anything in here that is, that is even remotely similar to what you're claiming happened, happened at the Council of Nicaea. And, of course, the conversation just died off after that. What I've come to realize, I've been thinking about this all day. The Council of Nicaea destroys the whole, it destroys all of the arguments that the conscious community makes. And the fact that they acknowledge the Council of, of Nicaea, that it actually happened, um, it, it works against them. Because, uh, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Athanasius, right? Athanasius was, uh, he was the Bishop of Alexandria around the time of the Council of Nicaea. Now, this is significant because not only was he a prominent church member, and a very, he was a very influential church member, he was an African. Athanasius was an Egyptian. Now, the Council of Nicaea took place in the year 325. That means when y'all talk that nonsense about how Christianity, that, uh, that uh, the white man brought Christianity to, to Africa and we didn't know anything about Christianity, the Council of Nicaea disproves that. Just looking at one man, we didn't even talk about the other people there. We didn't even talk about the other Africans who existed in the church before the Council of Nicaea, right? Just looking at this one man, it it, it dispels the nonsense that y'all that y'all talk about when the white man created the Bible to uh, justify slavery. Well, you first of all, you already have an African who's a Christian way before slavery existed. The scriptures existed even before him. So the whole idea that the white man created the scriptures. Look, those those uh, countries that that perpetuated that slavery, England, France, Portugal, Spain, those countries didn't even exist during the Council of Nicaea. And we had the scriptures then. So right off the bat. The whole idea that the white man created the scriptures to justify slavery. The Council of Nicaea disproved it because they argued over the scriptures. They existed. The, the, uh, the fact that we had an African church leader at the Council of Nicaea way back in the year 325. And he's not the only one um, that disproves the whole idea that that Christianity uh, only came to Africa through the through the means of the oppressive white man. So if you just actually studied, just learned, actually just read about the Council of Nicaea, you would see that most of the stuff y'all say is false. Like just this one guy, this one guy, Athanasius, he disproves two of the biggest things that y'all say against Christianity right there. Um, and you know what? As I go through the video series, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to share facts about the Council of Nicaea and just sharing those facts that you can actually research. You can research Athanasius. You can see whether or not he was, you can see whether or not he was really an Egyptian. He was really an African or not, right? Now that doesn't automatically validate the uh, Christian faith. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is there is blatant evidence and uh, there's, there's information out there that blatantly disproves the stupidity that is being promoted as consciousness and people are ignoring it because they're not doing any research. The conscious is not being conscious. You're just repeating things that you've heard. 
You're just posting memes that you've seen other people post. And maybe you've run into some Christians that didn't have any, ans any answers. So you think what you're, you know, you, you hear it so much and you don't, maybe you don't get a, a, a satisfactory reply. You think it's true, but you don't actually get research it for yourself. So I'm going to give you the first thing. I, I, you know, research Athanasius, the Bishop of Alexandria. You'll see that Christianity was in Africa hundreds of years before the, the white man slave countries even existed. Those countries, none of those countries even existed. And Christianity had already set foot in, in Africa. All right. So that, that's the first thing. Research it. It don't take long. Just go on Google and research the guy. So my whole point is uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to make several videos, and they're going to be very easy to follow. It's not going to be any elaborate arguments or anything. It's just going to be facts about the Council of Nicaea that are easily researchable, that refuse the nonsense. All right? So actually learn about what you're saying. Don't just repeat stuff you're hearing. Actually go and do research on the Council of Nicaea. Don't just... Post memes or say stuff you heard because when you talk to a Christian who knows a little bit of church history, you look like an idiot. And you, you, you think we're not listening to you because we're brainwashed. We're not listening to you because you, you don't know what you're talking about. 